Are you an indie retailer, maker, artist, or e-commerce entrepreneur who shoots photos of their own products? I'm Natalie Napoleon, a product photographer in Philadelphia, and today I'm going to share my top five pro tips for shooting standout product photos. Tip number one, get organized. Make a list of all the shots that you need and then all of your supporting props. Once you've done that, organize all of your props and products in one area so that when you're ready to shoot, you can start grabbing them as you go. Keep all of the products, if you're shooting several different products, keep all of them together. So keep all of the small products together, keep all of the shiny products together, keep all of the tall products together. That way, once you dial in your light and your settings, all you have to do is take one product out and replace it with the other. Tip number two. Invest in a rolling cart. You can pick one of these up at your local craft store, and it's really great to keep all of your tools so once you start shooting, everything you need is at your fingertips. Keep all of your gear on the top shelf, like your lenses and your remotes and your lens cloth and your cords. Keep all of your tools like scissors and knives and blades on the middle shelf, and keep all of your cleaning supplies on the bottom. That way, in case anything leaks, it leaks right onto the floor and not onto your gear. Tip number three know your customer. When you're setting up your scene, make sure that you include elements that speak to your customer. You want to create an aspirational scene that your customer looks at and feels like they need to have in their life. So if your customer is drinking tea, maybe they're also a reader or maybe they also like to have greenery in their lives. What you can do is make a list of all the things that your customer likes to do. So books they like to read, magazines they like to read, places they like to visit, colors they like, and all of that information is going to inform your final scene. Tip number four, shoot tethered. What that means is use a cord called the tether cord that plugs into your camera and then also plugs into your computer. This way you can get a live view of your setup. So here I can look as I'm about to shoot and see that I don't like what the spoon looks like. So I can move the spoon in front. I still don't really like how that looks. So I can change the angle all while watching rather than taking a picture and coming back in front. I can move the handle around. I can put the handle on the teapot back down. So shooting tethered really gives you a lot of opportunity to set the scene exactly as you want it. Especially if you're shooting by yourself, this is a huge time saver. I'm using software here called Capture One. You can also use the software that your camera came with, or you can even use if you're shooting with a phone, you can use Zoom software. The only thing when you use Zoom is be aware that if you're shooting uh, vertically or turn your camera, your phone upside down and shoot upside down, then your image will be upside down on your Zoom screen. But nonetheless, it's extremely helpful when you have a live view of what you're shooting. Tip number five, don't be afraid of artificial light. So no matter what type of light you're shooting with, a professional strobe or something like this LED light, what you can do is redirect the light. So right now you see I have the light directed right at my setup, which is causing a little bit of a glare in the glass itself and clearly overpowering the scene. So one thing I can do is I can change the angle of the light and then all I need to do is grab something like a piece of foam core and redirect the light. So you can see as I'm angling the foam core, I'm eliminating the glare on the glass and I'm also lighting the scene up at the same time. You can very easily use a wall or the ceiling. So you can raise the light up as high as it goes and then reflect the light up off the ceiling. 
Uh, if you're using a ceiling, you want to make sure that you have a flat white ceiling. If you're using a wall, preferably a, a white wall. I have gray walls in here. You can use a gray wall. If you use a green wall or a blue wall, for example, then those colors are going to reflect back into your scene, which will just co cause more post-production in the end. So grab something that's white and use that as a reflector to eliminate any shadows on any type of reflective objects in your scene. Bonus tip number one, keep a lens cloth nearby and wipe your lens often throughout your shoot. That way, if you have a fingerprint or a piece of dust on the lens, your camera isn't focusing on those, eliminating blurry images. Bonus tip number two, if you ever have a problem with your equipment or your lighting, give b a call. B&H has a live video chat feature, so you can chat with someone directly in the store and they will walk you through any issues you're having with your camera or your light or even a software on your computer. Use these tips to create powerful product stories that immediately connect with your customer emotionally and show them why they need your product, how to use your product, and help them rationalize their purchase. For more product photography tips, follow me on Instagram at natalie.napoleon.